Leeds United made the most of their second chance in the European Cup against Stuttgart, the team they say has more foreign reserves than the Bank of England. Leeds won 2-1 in Barcelona in front of a tiny crowd. Their hero was Karl Schutt. He scored the winner less than a minute after coming on as a substitute, and tomorrow's his birthday. Hey up, and welcome to episode 90 of the Talking Shop podcast, and I am joined by the usual clan, Young Ben, who's looking jaded. Hello. <laughs> less said about that, the better. Yep. Raggy, good day. Hello. Hello, how are yep. you? Not bad. Went to be Australian for a bit there, but never mind. Yeah. Uh, old Ben, right. who's growing a beard. Well, I just can't be out shaving. Right, and it's a depressive not shaving thing. And an extremely special guest tonight, who's easily the most talented man in the room, but it's not—it's not particularly hard. Uh, Andy McVeigh, uh, the Burley Banksy. Welcome to Talking Show. Hey up, thank you very much. No worries. So we'll get into your ribs very shortly because we'd rather talk to you than about football at the moment. But before we do any of that, we've got to mention our three fantastic sponsors: the guys at the Social Mayors, massive Leeds fans who offer social media marketing, a package of staff just ninety-nine quid. The guys at the Terrace who are doing cracking mugs, and even got a Burley Banksy range of mugs. Oh, it's mad, isn't it? Yeah, it's how cool is that? <laughs> it's amazing. Do you have a bit of a pinch yourself moment every now and yeah, again? Yeah, yeah, and I've seen people drinking out of, you know, out of my mugs and seeing the odd phone case at the match, and you think, that's mine, Chuck yeah. it out. Class, <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Uh, so yeah, them guys are pushing out some quality football merchandise that you can't get in your club shop, and they sponsor Raggy's Predictor. Raggy's doing read, I've even given it tonight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, happy days. I'm all prepared. And for I'm the ready. last week, finally, and sadly, the guys at The Athletic, containing our very own Phil, Philip of here, not the... F- yeah, we'll yeah. leave that on. Yeah, that, yeah. that gag's been done, hasn't it's it? It's been done today. Yeah. So, episode 90. And I'll be honest, lads, I've not been looking forward to this one um, to the point where Saturday night I thought, do you know what? I might just retire. Because <laughs> I'm not really sure what to do. I've, I've li- I don't know about you a lot, but I've literally like gone through, I think, feel like every emotion. So, um, I foolishly tweeted before the game that I've never been as angry at football since Wigan last year. And after this Saturday... <laughs> I weren't particularly angry. I was just extremely sad. I just felt flat. Disconsolate. Disconsolate, yeah. But anyway, before we get all depressive, we'll talk to Andy because he's going to make us feel happy yeah. before that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, mate, I think the best place to start is uh, let's talk about the love for the beloved Leeds United. When did that start? Um, my first game was 1980, and I remember it. I, I don't know how I remember it, but we've got beat by Forrest in FA Cup. Oh, that's an old um, I went boys' pen. 50p, it's like some like, you know, nostalgic trip in it. I remember people chucking coins at Peter Shilton's head. <laughs> um, Quite fitting at the minute. I remember, him, I remember him picking him up in between, you know, when ball went out of play, sort of thing. And they were landing in his perm and everything. Um, <laughs> and, but it was quite, I remember it, it was horrible atmosphere though. There, there were fights breaking out with Leeds fans in boys' pen, for God's sake. And I didn't go then for ages till about 85 or something like that, when it was Chez and Bairdy and all that. And then I proper got bugged then. I, I was buggered, really. I would, you know, I was sucked in. It was that all cliche about, you know, the greenness and the noise and all that. And me and some mates that going from Rothwell um, every week, and I just couldn't get enough of it. It was ridiculously addictive. And we were shit then, weren't we? Let's be mm. honest. <laughs> um, but it didn't matter. It was just about... And then, um, yeah, so I'd seen Ticket for years, all through 90s and stuff. And then when my little boy was born, um, we split up with Mrs. pretty quick. So I, had, I couldn't really go on weekends because I only had him at weekends. And he didn't want to go. He was like a baby and that. So... Yeah. I, I managed to free me sen of the clutches of Leeds United for a while. I'm sure I were happy. <laughs> <laughs> I was just calm. I was just thinking then when you said that we were shit. Then I'm starting to think that it were better when we were shit. <laughs> we can't do with this. Come on. No, no. Then we got good. <laughs> then then Wilco came and we got good, didn't we? Yes, yeah, so, you know. Yeah. And then, but um, I, yeah, I, I used to look at results, but I, it didn't affect me that much. Mm-hmm. Which was like this beautiful time where. You weren't crying every Saturday night, or you know it didn't ruin your weekend. But but then, the thing is that can't be done by choice, though, can it? That's no, the, that's the problem. Like no. a few times in recent years, particularly through the darker ages, when like it was just becoming a bit of a laughing stock. I was like, do you know what? I, that's it. I'll, I'll keep an eye out, but yeah. I'm not being emotionally yeah. invested, and I couldn't do it. I, I literally couldn't do it. I just could not do it. I mean, even like I spent six years away so I didn't really get to many games but I still followed Leeds from afar and went to like ridiculous lengths to be able to like watch uh, highlights or follow results or whatever you just it's not one of the things you can pick up and leave you went down to local social centre in Kabul and that no I've got (laughs) one story so we were in a particular place um, somewhere and we're like 
on a night you're not allowed any light, so you can't have a fire. You can't. You're not even supposed to smoke or all like that because obviously, if bad people see that, they can then start throwing things that go bang towards the light, like smoke and that. So, but they had tents that they could shut the flaps up so they could contain the light inside. And generally, in the tent was normally a burko boiler to have some tea and a telly, and it was like one end of a runway to another. So I just used to mooch in dark from my end to that end just to get into the tent to try and catch results or <laughs> you know a bit of highlights, and then. Walk back and all lads used to think I'm mad because it was like length of an airfield. So it was a, it was a fair yomp, but it's, in, it's ingrained in you. You can't. I just. It's like being in mafia. They say, you know, they thought I was out, they pulled me back. <laughs> <laughs> and I stopped going for a while. And it's one game, and it you fall off wagon. It's like being an alcoholic, and it you fall off wagon. You're like, oh crap, I'm st- I'm here again. I can't. You know, my, my lad started wanting to go again when he got to about six, seven, and that. And so I blame it all on him now. When we when we sort of you know. Staggering home from game, miserable. I say it's all your fault. You wanted to go, and he said, "I was seven. You can't blame me." <laughs> yeah. um, so, did the Art and Leeds United come come at the same time, or I've never done art before. No, really, no. I've I've, I've spent half my life at Royd School in Rothwell doodling on my textbooks, you know that kind of thing, and <laughs> doodling LUFC and my favourite bands. But literally, that were it. Yeah, I were a, uh, were a PE teacher, well, primary PE, and I used to teach art. Obviously, you have to teach everything, but. No, I'd never done any art or art like that, you know. So where, where did the sort of box inspiration type thing I don't, I started doing it in Edinburgh and Burley um, to cover up graffiti where I live because you have loads of like, horrible tagging and stuff. And then um, I started I started doing it a bit because I was struggling a bit. My, my sister's the little girl died and stuff and I did a box for her and it, it made me feel a lot better about it and stuff. And I, f- I found, I was talking to Phil about this, I found it um, when things were quite tough, painting made me feel better. You know what I mean? I don't know why. Some people drink, don't they? Some people go to the gym, some people, whatever. Mm. Um, and then I would go to that game one day and there were loads of them boxes. And I thought, oh, that'd be a good reason. And I've always liked um, all design and I love the smiley and the kits. And I don't buy kits anymore. I'm too old for that kind of stuff. You don't want to see me in a football kit. But I've, you, you still get excited about kits, don't you? What's it going to look like? You know, yeah, yeah. I did ask next year, oh, we're going to have two blue stripes and a yellow one. It's, I love all that stuff. And I just, I did one and I thought, that oh, looks cool, right? That. And and I wasn't even on Twitter then, I don't think. And then I did a few more and put them on Twitter, and then people, I don't know, it just sort of took off, didn't it? And <laughs> but sadly, obviously, it rose mostly to prominence through the knobheads who decided to pick <laughs> over it, which we did mention quite a few times on the show, actually, because we were a bit outraged about it as well. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure they got shit house, didn't they? But yeah, they got <laughs> shit house a week. But like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. in a roundabout way, it's massively like, like pissing it wind for them, really, because it's if anything, it's pushed you on even more, even even more. You've got. You know, you got loads more support. Literally, two hundred percent. It made it more. In, it got me in papers and all. I mean, I didn't ask for it or out like that, but it went in papers and then it's gone on national papers. And I mean, here's, you know, doing these kinds of things. It's it's been mental, really. I mean, he shot him sending foot, hadn't he? This mm. fella. I think it was one fella. I don't think there were a, a group, group, of, group yeah. of these lads. Would you have? Could be asked doing that on a night with your pal. You know, let's go out <laughs> and paint boxes all night. He'd be, yeah. Be- better awesome. things to do, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. yeah. I'm sad acts about. Yeah, so I don't know why he did it, and I'll never understand his bizarre reasons that he, he said in his emails. That it just doesn't make sense. I mean, we said it at the time when sort of the news came out of it. All you're doing is brightening up a green box. I know. I so, know. like, there's the one you've done near Edinley. I think Stokes, is it one, three, oh, five? Oh, yeah, one. yeah, yeah. And stuff like that. Just, like, things, I guess, like, you could do that with cricket and... Rhinos round Eddingley yeah, and yeah, yeah. round Beast and do all that. So then in town you could do anything, I don't know, someone like Leeds related. And I've done some at Leeds Market actually, um, you know, in, in outside market, yeah. You know, and even people have walked past who live in Beast and who aren't into footy and just said, I don't. I don't care about football. I've seen one it. near Headingley Station. It's not football or sport related at all, I don't think. Oh, God, yeah. What's that one? Is I that can't a, remember what it is. It's a word search, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah me and Ellen did different that, yeah. letters and stuff yeah, like we've that. Yeah, we've done loads there of, the other day. Me and Ellen have done, friend Ellen have done like loads of non-leads ones. So his reasons went from, it ended up as a race issue at one point. He said there's too many <laughs> white people go to football and, yeah. and beast and he's multicultural. And I'm going, well, yeah, it isn't. But I'm not. If you think I'm Nigel Farage or Tommy <laughs> Robinson, you've got wrong. I teach in Beast and I've taught hundreds of Muslim kids, Syrian kids. You've got wrong fella if you think this is some kind of anti multicultural thing. No, that's, yeah, that's yeah, a really poor you, you idea. You know you cl- yeah, you know you're clutching, clutching when you start yeah. going yeah. down yeah. that line. His so. reasons change in every yeah. email anyway. So. But then now look at it. I mean, we went to the, me and Ben went to the Trust um, Centenary exhibition. Yeah. You know, you had all your canvases in there. You know, 
so do you, do you get to the point where you pinch yourself? I mean, you you were part of this Leeds United centenary <laughs> oh, exhibition, you know, I, from something that just started off as scribbling on textbooks to now. This. <laughs> There's been many pinching yourself <laughs> yeah. moments since last six months. Yeah, I mean, I went and they'd done an old wall of it and they'd put them on these kind of record sleeve size thing. They're all I love. I'm yeah, obsessed yeah. with music, so I'm like God, it's like record sleeve. And I did think, bloody hell, how has this happened? You know what I mean? Um, I took my lads and they were like, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, have a picture. Come on, it's my dad's wall here. Yeah. Stand there and I'm like, oh, I'm a picture there. You know that? <laughs> I think it's really good now, though, that you've got parents taking the kids to particular boxes you've painted to point them out before games and have the photos took with them and stuff like that. I always had that in mind because I'm a primary school teacher and I thought, oh, this would be nice for kids, you know? And yeah, like, yeah. People, kids will say, well, who were Gary Speed and mm. why is that kit green and navy blue? You know, yeah. and your dad will say, oh, that were 90s. And it's like a little history lesson, maybe on where to take game. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that, and people have said, they've sent me pictures, and this is my little lad, and he loves that box. And one bloke said he does a tour of them with his lads. Yeah, I saw that, actually. That's, that's, that's really nice, yeah. isn't it? Um, so why... why is it, like, going with the, the, the cricket one, it, it has them history moments that yeah. you can go back and say, oh, this happened then, and show them, and... And it's good that, and I don't think there's enough of that sort of celebrating no, the city and and Leeds United. Phil and, said and that anything. he said there's no real apart from stadium in Beeston, there's no in this city representing Leeds United. Mm. Mm. And he said a lot of other, countries, especially foreign countries, they have they have like newels apparently have loads of yeah, murals, murals everywhere, and, and there's yeah. things in Liverpool and stuff. And he says this city don't push Leeds United enough. So he said he, it's obviously struck a chord with people, maybe. Yeah. And I didn't even do it for that; it was just a subconscious. Thing really, but no. um, and I think a lot of it's to do with Bielsa, isn't it? We all got a lot more positive, and yeah. I think I think so. I think, like you say, you haven't done it specifically there, but I think it's coincidence that it's kind yeah. of come at a time where yeah. Bielsa kind of came in and united a, a lot of yeah a lot of Leeds fans, and all of a sudden we all seem to be pulling. I think he kind of made us just believe in football again. Mm. Yeah, where we've gone through a stage where we were just used really pass from one owner to another for different reasons, and then like. Andrea came in and, you know, think whatever you want of him. He, he has sorted things out to, yeah. to to a large degree. And then he brought Bielsa in and sort of with his prophetic thinking and, <laughs> you know, the way he, he approaches things, you just think, do you know something? Yeah, yeah. It's, identity, it's just changed identity, it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's given us a bit of dignity it. back and mm -hmm. a bit of moral compass again. Yeah, he has, we yeah, definitely. Have, you know, we had horrible owners, didn't we? No mm. one were particularly proud about being a Leeds fan, really. Only almost despite, you know, despite everything and, you know, but... I think, yeah, I wouldn't have done this five years ago, I think. I wouldn't no. have had the inclination to, mm. to have done it. Really. But I think it's a good thing as well, like, because Ellen Rhodes looking a tad tatty. If we get promoted, it needs a little bit of a yeah. spruce up. Despite all its uh, nostalgic feel, it, it does look tatty in areas. And, like, uh, me and Ben were at the Trust. I didn't really have a massive amount to it, but the mural just be, just before the Lowfields Tunnel, yeah. obviously that. And then you yourself with the box. It just makes it and just a nicer place to sort of be so, around, yeah. you know, for particularly for people who might not go to Ellen Road a lot as well. It kind of all buys into the match day feel as well. So yeah, people have said they're part of their match day experience. You're like, oh, that's amazing, you know, to be to think you've contributed a bit, even a little bit to that is, you know, I'm quite chuffed really. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Should be. Yeah, so yeah. massively full credit to you. I, th I think they're fantastic. Yeah. Okay, uh, well. and, and later on when we mention the terrace, we'll tell you where you can get some better banks <laughs> of mugs and phone cases and all that type of stuff from. But unfortunately, lads. We're gonna have to address the elephant in the room. <laughs> yeah. What are you looking at me for? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm glad Ben said it. And I didn't. That's harsh, man. That's, That's really harsh. harsh. I'm just waiting for Ben to kind of just go on a massive rant. That's why. So, I was just gonna go home. <laughs> right. So. Great. On. So. <laughs> when we start talking about Wigan, I desperately don't want to like cover old ground that's been covered for the last four days, which is like he shit, their shit, that shit. This should have done better than that. That shit. That's wank. The other. So. Let's Do you want to, like simplify it? No. No, I don't. Not, right. not right this second. Let, <laughs> let's talk broad and then we'll simplify right. it from your terms. Uh, so Wigan, a game really for a team pushing for the top two that we should have been winning. They had, what, two wins in 36 away from home? Now three. Um, two, and of two, two of them were us. Two of them were us, yeah. yeah. And to be honest, it started the way we'd expect it to start. We were dominant. We were creating chances. We kept possession. We moved them around. They looked like they spent a lot of time trying to adapt to the way that we were moving the ball around. And as usual, we looked pretty much in control. Yeah, Take them words out, add Sheffield Wednesday to them, <laughs> add every other game we've ever lost this season, it's yeah. exactly the same, isn't yeah. it? But again, the missing piece of the jigsaw is the ball going in the onion bag. So Jack Harrison came closest early on. With that, we sent three of them for a 
hot dog, and then <laughs> ate the post. Yeah. You know, yeah, he couldn't. Amazing. I don't think he could do anything better, to be honest. Apart from no, obviously hit the net, just so kick it harder the yeah. first time. He's done everything right, and he's sold them, and he, it's just at the post. I can't remember who it was, but he scores a really similar goal down that end earlier on in the season when it came off the inside of the post. It did, yeah. I can't remember who it was. Bamford set him up with a yeah. beautiful touch. And, and he looked he like he inside, looked, cuts inside, puts it, and it, uh, that one's inside the post and in. Whereas mm. this one, it's, it's just millimetres, looking. isn't it? Yeah. But again, going into half time, you think, yeah, cool. Um, you know, we're still in control. We're just there were never any trouble there. No, so we just started no, they, found they, the net. They had that Kiefer Moore up front, and he looked as disconsolate as I felt. To be honest, at ninety minutes. I, I don't think he, he played too bad. Kiefer no, Moore, he won but, everything. But he had, but well, he, he, had, he, had, he had nothing, nothing, to, he had go nothing to go off. Yeah, and I, yeah. and I said, turned around to my dad and I said, he's blowing already after twenty five yeah. minutes because all they had was just a lump up forward. He'd run after it, then what? I'd intercept it or Cooper's mop up. And that was it. And then we we just moved forward. And he were getting he were getting shirty as well yeah. because he just couldn't feed off yeah, anything. Yeah. And that was their their entire attacking outlook. That was it. But again, you get to half time. I mean, what, what were you feeling like at half time? Because my feelings were we should be in front. We're not, but we still we still got every bit of this game. We're still well in control. We should still go on to win this. I think my exact words were, "This is the worst team I've seen at Ellen Road since when Middlesbrough came." I thought they were that poor. Um, and like you said, you're filled with that kind of encouragement that we're going to go on, we're going to just just batter and beat them down and find that goal early on in the second half. That's why I genuinely thought we're coming. And then obviously the, I wouldn't say inevitable happened, but what happened happened and it kind of just drained the light, life out of the game for me, I think. Yeah, and it's been classic of us this season. I think I tweeted at half time. It's like another one of those where we could have been 2 0 up at half time. Mm. Game I were, over. I was watching it with this. I were on Gantry mm. and I was this reporter bloke next to me from, I don't know, I think we were from Final Score. And he, he kept chatting to me. Then he'd go off to it because they obviously go, and we go over to Ellen Road. So he went, hang on a minute. And he and he would say, this is dead. He said, um, how are Leeds not 3 0 up? This is ridiculous. This is unbelievable. And he looked at me and said, how are you not 3 nil up? And I was like, welcome to our world, pal. <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is what happens. And just before corner went in, he just said, you know what's going to happen now, don't you? Yeah, so let's address the corner first uh, that Wigan score from, and then we'll address the other issues around it. Um, initially, I was in the car, so I didn't see it live, but um, BBC Radio Leeds, Noel Whelan and Adam Pope um, blamed a goalkeeping error. Um, I saw the... And the highlight later that evening, because obviously I missed it live, and from the angle I was at, it looked like a goalkeeping error. Um, I, I got quite a few angry tweets from people who were sat in South Stand saying, no, it took a massive deflection, wind were an issue, blah, blah, blah. It was really windy. It was really windy. Right, and, and, and okay, and I, I can take that, but my argument is that Kiko still doesn't make a, if a, a good fist of trying to get it, or B, a good fist of trying to make it look like he were fouled, which I think there's an argument that three players are yeah. barging him into the net. I it's, think your keeper has to be taking control of, of anything. Go through, and we've said this before about Kiko, go through whoever. Do not get bullied out of anything. If you then get fouled, then it's up to the referee. You're never going to give a penalty away. No. No. The, the no, worst well, case scenario... Well, no, 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 you're not. You're never, no. The, the referee's never going to give... No. A penalty on a keeper coming through, I'm pretty a, sure coming they through got a, one. a striker. Never, yeah. ever. Where they they got a free kick because we challenged for an edit. Bamford. Oh, Bamford. Yeah. Bamford challenged for an edit. Bamford just, just jumped yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, challenge not into the keeper for. at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A, absolutely. So he's never, ever going to do it. Nah. He, he do not do enough for me, definitely. I, go. He's, I, I, I really don't like criticising footballers, especially our team. I really don't. But that one incident, I genuinely think that was Sunday league goalkeeping. Mm. It were amateur, honestly. He had ages to see it come in. It got yeah. a touch on it. But yeah, it it's deflected, ears. but if anything, that helps Kiko it because it's it takes put pace it, off it. It takes pace off it. it. He's put it even higher up in the air. He's got more time to think I about it, more it time really, to do stuff. Really I, really I agree. And I'm, I'm everyone just, seemed to sort of move towards the ball mm. like too quickly, like everyone, and then it just sort of flew over he everyone. Totally which lost was a bit the weird. Of it, yeah, and he made a really. I yeah. mean, if that were Fat Dave from the Black Bull Sunday League pub team, his mates would be like, what the chuffing hell with that? Yeah. And he'd be like, I'm really sorry that we're out. And that, this is championship. He's mm. a top goalkeeper. So again, really poor, again, sorry. you're on the back foot. Is a lot, well, it was about the 58th minute, I think. Or something, even less than that. I can't remember the exact timing of the goal. But No, it was later. Was it, it was later. 60 summer, I think. Was it? Yeah, yeah. I think so. But still, I still was like thinking, we came back from Millwall. We showed, yeah. we showed bottle, we showed fight. We came back from Millwall, granted in dif different situation, but we came back and I still thought that if we went and got the next goal, we'd be the only team that would go on and win it. But then after that, 
the game just kind of. But did we still we still had chances and we still went mm. at them. I agree. I think the worry is if we don't score and then concede, which I think is part of not scoring as well, that they start to panic. Yeah, yeah. When you have that many chances that we had in the first half, and it's like they think we aren't going to score here. I think oh, the, oh, just the, the pressure is on everyone else, especially going back to the defence and thinking, if we make a mistake here, mm. we've not scored, we need to then score one, but we're not scoring. And which, then that which, sort of which, takes the concentration off everything yeah. that they should Which actually be doing. did happen. If you remember, we pushed everyone forward and Stuart Dallas was the last man back. Tom Pierce, And then Christ. slipped yeah. as they yeah. knocked yeah. it over his yeah. head. And Tom Pierce is clean through. I mean, yeah. he's done really well to get back to oh, him. Oh, it was brilliant. From and, that. and that you know, that. he's never give up that. that but yeah. that is exactly what you've just said there. Us trying to force the issue then yeah. because we won nil down and we all of a sudden we were kind of forcing the game already because we were well in control of it and we wanted a win. We didn't want to obviously yeah. draw nil nil. But we even we wanted to do it even more and we just kind of We were just but, then becoming really then, rash. Like you could talk the, the last shot of the game with Costa. He cuts inside yeah, and yeah. he just smashes it. Really good yeah. chance. And they were, all he had to do was place it, and it mm. was just it was everything was just like that. But there was a, there was so much more of that there was a, it was the amount of crosses. I mean, I got fed up of the amount of times that Kipre number twenty one cut out our crosses. He was brilliant, to be fair, wasn't he? I mean, but, but it was straight to him every yeah, time. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? It was yeah. every single. Didn't matter whether it was coming from the left or the right. We just seemed to pick him out every single time. But if he was doing the same hours, thing, if he was doing the same thing every time, and this is what started to bug me with it. Why isn't someone getting into the position where they can cut that out before it gets to him? The thing is, though, whenever you're 1-0 in front at Ellen Road, you're always going to pack the box out. And there were times towards the end of the game where they had, like, literally well, had 10 players in box. They had everyone. And, they had everyone. It, and, and then that always kind of highlights that it looks like we're being wasteful in final third, but you're trying to drill it through 10 players in box mm, to you find three. You need a bit three. of luck in them situations, yeah. don't you? We, you know, we had two cleared off line, I think, you know, and... Yeah. You know, you need a bit of luck, but at the same time, I think you're right, they start to panic a little bit and you lose your composure. Maybe that ball does hit a defender when it should be six inches that way to find Bamford or whoever. But I think it became quite predictable. Yeah, I think, left, right, cross it in. Yeah, right, and I think left, Wigan started in. to get into a groove Joe almost yeah, yeah. of like, we can defend this all night now, we can do this with ten in box. Yeah. And that's where you think... But that comes from the mental thing that then they think we aren't going to score. Yeah, mm. maybe you're right. And the problem is... If we score in the first half, I, I reckon that game's done. Oh, yeah, yeah. If we score one, we score two, we score three, because we can just capitulate watched, and drop to bits. I watched a bit of Brentford on Saturday when they played Hull, and after their first goal, it were like, Hull were like, well, this game's over. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's been typical throughout. Well, have you... Well, ever you leave a dog in a fight, it's going to fight. And, like, you know, it's true, though, isn't it? Like, we look at Wednesday. We, we had chance after chance after chance, didn't take it. We left them with something to play for, they scored. Yeah. Uh, Forest, beginning of the season, we were one goal up when we should have been four yeah, goals up. Yeah. We left them something to fight for. They Swansea. got them. They, they, Swansea, Derby. Oh, well, ever yeah. you don't bury teams, you know, and, and I know inevitably this conversation switches to the blame comes to Patrick Bamford, who's the number nine, who should take more chances. And to a degree, the, there's an element of that. But also... Um, you know, we need to start looking at Elder Costa, at Jack Harrison, at Mateus Klitsch, at Pablo Hernandez. They need to be chipping in as well. They need to be helping him out a little bit. And to be honest, other than Bamford and Harrison in the recent games and Costa hitting the bar against Millwall where we're already in front, we don't look a threat from anywhere else other than Patrick Bamford, mm. in my eyes. I don't think the so. The pressure I mean, on him must be massive. Exactly. Yeah, no. definitely. And I, th I, th I, th sorry, mate, on. I thought one thing that we did do differently was when Roberts came on. Um, yeah, and he looked a bit. I mean, I don't really know where he came on because we took Elioski off and basically said to Harrison, "Right, you look after the left hand side." <laughs> yeah, he, he, had, he had to literally do yeah. everything, which meant that then all really our attacking play had to come through the right because yeah. was, yeah, that was did. where the overlap was. Yeah. And then kind of Roberts had again. I, d I wouldn't even be able to tell you where he played, but he kind of cropped up a bit. But what I like about him is he's a, he's more direct and yeah. I think he just needs to have a bit more, just have a pop at some, sometimes he, he just seems to do, and they're all guilty a of A bit it. too yeah. much, yeah. They all just seem to do the hard work and then just not want to then commit to having a shot. But, we but, have players who can score from know, distance. Clicky and Pablo can, mm, and they do. Exactly, yeah. But this is, this is becoming, for me, in my opinion, this is becoming a mental issue, but not a mental weakness issue because we showed that we've got bottled by coming back against Millwall when we could have easily rolled over and let him tickle his belly. But then the players know 
there's players are feeling that we're not we're not creating clear cut chances, and when we are, we're missing them. Whether whoever that is, like you know, we can easily just go Patrick Bamford's to blame for everything, Brexit, uh, everything else. <laughs> He's, it's his fault. You know what I mean? And and to a degree, some of the some of the chances is missed. You know, he's got to do better yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. And the but, day he's the, he is the I'm not, I'm not putting it all in, but he is the number nine. He's the main person that scores. So yeah, a, a big portion of that blame is onto him. Yeah, but there is others that need to back that up as well. Arguably for me, and we mentioned it before we came on air, or added to Young Ben, um, two of the biggest chances we've missed in recent games have not fell to Patrick Bamford, they've fell to Jack Harrison. Yeah. Uh, yes, chances yeah, that he exactly. should really score Sheffield Wednesday yeah. he should score he literally has to touch it anywhere on target it goes in keeper ain't got time to move Saturday so you know what, Bamford's an excellent pass why he ball. feels he needs Beautiful. to take a touch I'm not mm. sure it. and again I'm you know he's as equally as guilty as Bamford now I'm not defending Bamford in terms of his chance conversion but it's easy to just blame him because he's the number nine where mm. Others need to chip in. The so stats are that. bad for him, aren't they? I mean, you know, you can't argue with stats, can you? His conversion rate and all that kind of stuff. But I don't. I, I just. I feel for that. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of we've had players who used to miss chances and didn't give a damn. You know. He, mm. he, yeah. I That's think there's it. a bit of reverse snobbery with with Bamford. Maybe he's a posh lad. You know what I mean? He's had a privileged life. You think. Yeah. You know, if he were a working class lad from, you know, Old Beck, would he get that much grief? I don't know. I mean, to be fair, lad, he could be sat at home on his daddy's money in a smoking jacket with a cigar on and a brandy, living off dad's money. And he's chosen the only profession in the world where your family wealth and your connections are not going to get you anywhere, are they? You're going to have to, it's purely on merit, isn't it? And you so want him to do well, don't you? So I feel like his dad sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, and when he misses one, it. it you just feel for him because you worry whether it affects him for the rest of the game. I mean, it didn't at Millwall. He, I think he missed one at first half and then he obviously did really well. But he, when he missed that one that almost went backwards, you thought, is that is that got in his head now? I, I think it has. Know. I think it's yeah. absolutely no doubt, unquestionable, it's got in his head. And like we talked about earlier, who people saying, well, he's on 30 grand a week, he should be able to do better, blah, 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 blah. Irrespective of what you're on. People are human beings, yeah. and eventually yeah, criticism is going to affect you. Whether you're whether you're a millionaire, billionaire, whatever, criticisms, criticism, it cuts deep in certain people. It depends what you are as a character. And this idea that Patrick Bamford can turn his social media off and totally ignore it, it yeah. doesn't even need yeah. to be that. It, it doesn't even need to be words on a screen. All it needs to be is it makes a mistake and an audible sigh, which you know. And and we're entitled as fans to do that because we're disappointed by it. Yeah, yeah. But again, it all kind of builds into this massive. Um, a circle of like just you can't see his confidence growing out. It's got two goals against Millwall, and you think perfect. Yeah, you know, off we go. Comes into the game, and you know, his, his overall game on Saturday were decent. Yeah, it's just again chance conversion weren't great. That I think, that we were talking about that video. Somebody's made of him missing chances. I think it's horrible. Yeah. I think it's a horrible thing to do. And, and how is that ever going to help? It's not. We were saying you could do a. Um, Salah missed a sitter from four yards the other week. You know what I mean? In that Man United Liverpool game, there were four proper sitters missed in that game by top world class players on both sides. And you think you could do a, a, a video of Salah's misses, couldn't you? And it'd probably be five minutes long. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it, I don't know how that helps. Yeah. You know Ra- what? Raheem Sterling misses all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, all the time. His, his conversion rate must be. Pre- yeah. I mean, I know he then crops up and bangs a few in as yeah, well. Yeah, he does. And he's playing with. But again, Man he's City missed exactly. chance after chance, chance against yeah. Spurs. But, the but again, though, that it's that thing of the fact that we're not getting goals from anywhere else further, yeah. further yeah. brings the pressure yeah. on. So when Raheem Sterling misses from edge at, like edge at goal line, manages to put it over somehow. City are already freeing up. You yeah. know, De Bruyne is chipping in. David yeah. Silva's chipping in. You know, Aguero's chipping in. Like same as if we're freeing up on Saturday and Kiko chucks that one in there, it's never mentioned again. People go, he's a fucking idiot. That's it. It's never mentioned after that. Whereas now it's he needs to be, he needs to leave, sell him back to whoever, play the boy that's got long arms, just do everything. <laughs> just yeah, do you know what I mean? And, and, like, and you know, I understand. I totally get the frustration. I've been a Leeds fan for a long twenty nine years or something. You know, I get the frustration. I want Leeds to get promoted more than all, but there's there comes a point, doesn't there, where like yes, we critic we've crit critique Bam- Bamford and he deserves the criticism in terms of his finishing yes we've criticised Kiko and he deserves the criticism but you can't affect yesterday you can certainly have an effect on tomorrow yeah. Yeah. so at one point at what point do we sort of dry his hands of it and go you know we've got this bloke who we've said is a master at football 
forever and we're very lucky to have him. But yeah, we've got to a point now where he's one dimensional. He doesn't have a plan B. He keeps playing a keeper, a, a keeper who chucks it in net, keeps playing a striker who can't even calls for um, Bielsa out yeah. on radio leads. It's, yeah. it's, 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 honestly, it's ridiculous. And it's, 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 it's anything Keith, like that. Keith Crow's got a weakness, haven't they, with crosses? Let's be honest, because it's happened a number of times, yeah, hasn't it? And don't know about you, but I have a coronary every time the other side gets a corner. <laughs> and you can feel tension in the ground, can't you? especially if we're not 3 0 up like it was against Wigan. But then you, with, with Kiko <laughs> and his mistakes, you look, the Brentford keeper made the mistake on Saturday. Rea, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, the howler. And you get that week in, week out in this league. You get it in Premier League. So Yeah, yeah, De Gea's made some horrendous. It, he took like that's week, happen. Mm. Yeah, but the thing is, again, like the point we're trying to make is we're in a bit of a rut at the minute where if we don't score, you can feel the tension that we yeah. haven't scored. And it's it's obviously having a big play. Like Kiko's mistakes are not as amplified if we take his chances. No. If 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 other people are chipping in, Bamford's mistakes and Bamford's misses are not as amplified as as everybody else's. Um I almost feel for players because they're in the most precious situation at Leeds United there has been for years and years, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And we are in this kind of last chance saloon thing. Aren't we? That if we don't get promoted this year, you're wondering if it'll ever happen. Well, that, that's the thing. That the pressure is. That's why the pressure is so yeah. much because we know how much actually is on it. Yeah. Whereas last year we kind of all right, we fell up that last hurdle, but Bielsa stayed. Yeah. We kept Phillips. We improved the squad in certain, you know, in certain opinions. Other people might have said that we lost some better player, whatever. But we've kept hold of a nucleus there, and we've gone yeah, on, and yeah. we've gone again. Yeah. And whereas this, you think if we don't go up now, it's a and whole rebuilding job. They and they must, and they've they know got they've got, got this well. entire city on their shoulders. Yes, really, completely. For the first time in what fifteen years since we were at Premier League, but, and they must feel it. But flip side, like so that I don't sound like a toss pot with sat in my ivory tower, like just looking at it totally one dimension. I understand the frustration in the fan base. I get yeah. it. I totally get it because. We know how good of a football inside we are. And literally the only thing that's holding us back at minute is we can't put ball at net on a regular basis. Mm. As a team, not just Patrick Bamford, as yeah. a team, we're not mm. doing enough. Set pieces, we're wasteful. We're wasteful. Corners, that we are no threat whatsoever. If anything, we're a threat of getting counter-attacked on from <laughs> set pieces. Yeah. You know, free kicks, we're not a threat from free kicks. We get free kicks in and around the area. How many times have we forced a save out of a keeper? You know, or are, all we like are we working on them at Thor Parch? Apparently so. Tyler Roberts yeah. came out in press this week and said that they do work on him at Thor Parch. But what I'm saying is, is it, has it become like a bit of a mental hurdle now between the team? And what is the thing that's going to get us out of it? I thought Millwall had got us out of it. Yeah. So did I. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I thought that was a massive psychological sort of hurdle that we'd got over then. And I thought we'd be flying on Because Saturday. we were 2-0 down from no real fault of our own. Yeah. Really, when you think about it. We come back. Bamford, who's massively under pressure, gets two. Yeah. You see, but like, talk- like from that, Bamford, he's literally just a tap in, and you see the confidence back in the players straight away because we've scored. Yeah. And then what, what we, and then what we've just talked about, Kiko and corners and that. I was sure that we were going to concede three three in stoppage time. We, they put <laughs> Matt Smith on. We give away a cheap corner, and what does Kiko do? Back post comes out, Come commands, yeah. and and falls on the ball. Does brilliantly, and then you think all those things. Then in the next game. We're back to square one again. Yeah, it's psychology, isn't it? It's it is. all in the red, isn't it? It is a little it bit. Is. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's I think it's totally all in the red. I, I, I do. They have because psychologists up there, don't no, they? I mean, allegedly, the rumours are that if they want to go and seek their own, they can. I know fact, Kemar Roof did last year. He did had it? a spot psychologist because he this kid blasted it all over Instagram, and I reached out to him to try and get him to come on the show and tell us about his craft kind of thing. Right. And he, he fucked me off, which is fine. Um, <laughs> but I'm led to believe that as a club. Unless the players specifically want request one, then they don't. But would they have the bottle to do that? This mm. is that classic male thing, isn't it? Of like, you know, saying to somebody, and especially to all the other team, I'm obviously a psychologist, will they get yeah. piss taken out of them? But if there's already one there, it's more likely to get used. Is mm. this is this some the, the blind spot for us that Possibly. we're not taken care of? Because I, I bet all the is, top clubs have got. Is one. it something? I mean, I, I don't know much about psychology, but I is don't. it something that a psychologist? Could sort out because basically what you if you're one of the defenders say you're hoping that we score a goal because and then that relieves the pressure. Everyone I guess apart from the front three is thinking if we score a goal that pressure's gone from us. Yeah, because we can play our game then and we'll we'll, we'll go score more. But it's that first goal every time. 
If we don't get that... Mate, it's that thing, like, the only thing I can liken it to... No, but never... you can't say that, because we've come back in games. We've come back after 2-0 down yeah. to win 3-2. Yeah. But it's we've getting come, that goal in back. the game. Once you've got that one goal, we're flying. But it's that getting that first mm, goal. Yeah. So you're saying the mental block is scoring first, basically? Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you'll that's go that's through the first right. half, there was a chance that came through to Bamford and it went over that. I don't know if the defender got a touch to it because it was at the other end to me. But something like that, you're thinking, here we go again. I think the, the first stat- one, the first sort of easy ish chance or half chance, you're thinking, here we go again. I don't think we've come back that much actually in games. I, th- I think I think that's the stats. I don't know. Millwall before that, Birmingham. And in fact, we were always in front of Birmingham. They kept, yeah, like, they kept pegging yeah. us, didn't they? Yeah. Um, but it's equalising goals that we've conceded. Yeah, though. I can't. Yeah, I think Can't we've won games when we've always been in front. I think that is really crucial for us, isn't it? Mm. The thing I'm clinging on to is the fact that we are still, and every single game we've lost this year, and every single game we've played this year, we have utterly dominated sides. <laughs> yes. We have utterly played teams off the park, and I don't care what anybody says, we are the best football inside in this division. Right now... We just can't put the ball in the net. <laughs> and as a result of not putting the ball in the net, we get panicky as a fan base, we get panicky as a mm-hmm. team, and we end up then conceding sloppy goals, which then gives teams the opportunity then to pack the box out, make it even harder for us, and we don't fucking score. So tell me if the answer is just we need to put the bastard ball in the net. Of it is. It is. Of course it is. You know, and we can slag whoever we want, and but we can get onto this- it. So, mo- so maybe going to Forest and Brentford next is exactly what we need. Because they'll come out and at least some players. Some, yeah. some Teams that are maybe going to have a bit more confidence to think, right, we're going to take these on because yeah, these yeah. are on a bit of a bad path. I think when we missed some, like the Chef Wednesday game, it's almost like when we'd missed the 17th sitter, Wednesday thought, we can bloody nick this. Mm. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And I think it lifts the other team. Well, mm. Wednesday did absolutely come with that tactic. And in yeah. fact, they wanted to stay in the game for as long as they possibly could, frustrate the crowd and try and catch us on the counter. And that's exactly what they did. That first goal, I mean... <sighs> there's, again, there's like... Goal. Yeah, it's just... But like the the thing I'm clinging on to all the time is we're still an excellent football inside who can tear oh, the God. living shit out of anyone. Well, that, that's we what, just need. That's a, what I'm clinging on to, and that, it's the hope that kills you, as, as I, I always say. And that's why I'm still kind of optimistic because, like I say, it, it's not like we've gone away, gone fucking hell. We're going to come to Ellen Road and dict us, no, which is terrible. Yeah. You know mm. what I mean? It's not. They've just fucking sucker punched yeah. us. The, yeah. The no. hope right now is, I guess, in all our minds, is that Augustine comes in, scores on his debut. He starts scoring, takes some pressure off Bamford, he starts scoring, so then you have your two strikers that are scoring, everyone else starts chipping in as well because the pressure's off, and we go up. Ben, you've got a point there, so he's sliding the microphone under your nose. No, just he made, he made the point for me, to be fair. He said Augustine to come in and score, which is what we need, but looking at the goal records from last year, you look at Pablo with 10 goal, uh, 12 goals, click with 10 goals, they're, no, they're nowhere near that this no. year. You know, and that, at this halfway point, you'd have thought maybe... Own goal's our second highest scorer. That's right, yeah. But it's an like, issue, that. That's an, that is an issue, I think. Like we've said, it, it's a, it comes down to... It's a mental blockage, I suppose. It's a confidence thing. It, re- it really seems to be that because the talent's there, the chances are there. It's just the getting your fucking... Do they have striking coaches? You, you would think. They'll have I'm a goalkeeper sure. coach. So do they He's have got an absolutely who... enormous backroom staff, so I'd be extremely surprised yeah. if not. But I think from reading... Like reports of people who've gone up and watched training or worked with Bielsa before, it's very much more about movement and, yeah. and team shape and team movements as opposed to individual things. So I would imagine the strikers will stay out after training or whatever, do some finishing because you know that's generally what yeah they yeah. do. But I think training is 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 la- and I'm I'm just purely guessing here by reading different reports from different people. It's purely around in-game management movement. Yeah. You know, it's more of a team thing than an individual. If that makes sense. Yeah, they'll obviously combine it because yeah. if you think about the that Bamford video from last season where he scores that absolute world. Well, it's, it's a movement in it. It's, it's, it's yeah. a movement, and then with the finish on and then off, a finish, off the back yeah, of it. Yeah. So they're obviously yeah. doing stuff like that. Yeah, defo. Um, I guess on on the sort of striking coach thing, we had when we had Chris Wood, and I think Beatty sat with, sat down with him and went through a few things, and then that's sort yeah. of what changed sort of Chris Wood into. Scoring the goals he did. So he couldn't hit a band off for quite a while, could he? And then he yeah. did suddenly. Now look at him. Yeah. I mean, regularly scoring in Premier. And it so. might be just that that maybe Bamford needs to change something he does in in the way he runs or whatever in his movement that that gets him that position. He's not playing extinct instinctively now, is he? You can see he's almost like when a good chance is about to come, 
There it's must too be, much to think about. There yeah, must yeah. be that doubt. Oh, shit, shit. When well, strikers play on total instinct, don't they? When they finish, it's like an instinct. We had confidence. We had David goal. Brown on the other week. I'm sure you listened to it, Andy. Um, and uh, he mentioned the, the one league goal he scored for Bradford. The ball went over the top and he said to us, if anybody picked up on it on the show, he went, I'm not really sure why I took it first time. It was yeah. just instinct. Yeah. And he were miles out, weren't he? He could have ran yeah, it into yeah. net and tapped it in. And that's that striker's instinct. Yeah. And I have to agree. And I do think as well, and I'm, you know, it's just one of them things. A lot of Bab- Bamford's chances drop on his right foot, which is his weaker foot. I, know, I, know. I don't know if... I, don't, yeah, yeah. I might be making that up, but I'm sure in my head, every time I see him, he always seems to be on his weaker foot. Um, now, whether that's just luck or what, I'm not sure, but... But wouldn't you... Th- that, that's maybe this change I'm on about. Get into positions where you're getting on your left foot better. Yeah. But is that built up and how the team are, are, are building the attacks, if you like? So Well, then maybe the team needs to build to, so Bamford can get in that position. I mean, we, we look dangerous when we're attacking down the left-hand side. So if the ball's coming in from the left... It should be on his left, shouldn't it? It should well, be on his left. Yeah. yeah. So you'd have thought that that makes a bit more sense, really. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Anyway, let's segue across. But then there's also been the times the one where he hoofed it over, was it? QPR, where he could have gone on his left, the one and he tried to chip it with his right. Yeah, the just, one where he tried to lob the forest keeper at Ellen Road, and that one on his left, and he just he, he got it over the keeper, but it just bounced the wrong side of the post. Yeah. If you remember, um, when Tyson Fury were in net for them, not Tyson Fury, the one Tommy Fury from Love Island, he were in net for them, weren't he? Remember, yeah. just looked like him. Who did it? He Man, watched the Man City keeper who they had on loan. He looked like. Oh, Fury. Um, Should you be watching Love Island? Though, By the way, maybe. Forest have ruined him. He'll never play football ever <laughs> yeah, again. He's, He's we think, broken, we think we ruin players. They've ruined him. He'll never play football again. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done for. Um, so, segue across then. Um, yesterday, down at Hillsborough, Kevin Ian turned out for the under-23s. Much panic. Uh, as many people watching the under-23s <laughs> during work as they possibly could to see the mercurial uh, Big Kev turn out. And the first few tweets are, what? He's fat. <laughs> He's slow. His first touch is shit. It's almost like watching can't, me play five-a-side. Can't by finish. Like. <laughs> um, did anybody catch it? In full? I saw bits no. of the first half. Yeah, I saw bits during my dinner hour of the first half. And let, come on, let's be honest. A really difficult uh, 45 minutes to judge him on. Oh, for a striker as well. He, he didn't yeah. really have much to he, go uh, on. The one chance he did have, he beat, he absolutely murdered their centre-back for pace, took a touch and made a save out of keeper. What more can you ask for from your striker? He was getting pushed wide by the defender. We've just said We need won. goals. Yeah, you're right. He should, he should have scored. Enough. It's not good enough. Um, but you know, he probably could have taken another touch and scored. To be fair, again, a few, stop it. Again, a few people getting vexed about uh, an under, one forty-five minutes of under twenty-threes. Um, I did have I, like a really weird, nervous laugh moment when the like, last few seconds at half, and he was yeah. on floor, and I'm thinking, oh, classic fuck. <laughs> I got a few screenshots of him laying on floor at work, saying, "He's down, he's down. What are we gonna do? He's down, he's down." I was like, "Yeah, just calm, calm down. I got coronavirus. He'll be fine. I'll go for a minute and, and play on." But. Um, <laughs> how do we see Kev being used because I know that certain quarters of the fan base will want him to start on Saturday and they'll cite Bamford's missed chances how do, how do we see him being used because I've got my fault the only big issue with that is if he comes straight in and doesn't provide the goal straight away he's just in the same position of what Bamford's in we, we've spent so much money on this player he was supposed to be the, the save he's supposed to score goals and fire his promotion he's not done it and then you got, you're in that cycle of Oh, it was a failure. We're fucked. We're shit. We're done. We're not going up. And that's what had happened. So why why, why risk it? Stick, him, be on bench. Bench. stick him on bench. And I think he'll be on it, bench for a fair few It has games. to go on the bench. I think he'll be a 30, 25 minute man for a, at yeah. least five games. Until we see him. Unless unless he comes on in his first 35 minutes. And, do you know something? No, I, I'm going to fucking take that word back. If he came on in 35 minutes and scored an hat trick in he next game. He starts next game. Well, not even an hat trick. If he scores one. I don't think he does. I bet I don't. I don't think he does. He if he comes on is. and he has a world day, I, I don't think you could say to him, no, you're going to be on bench. I will bet you 10 great British pounds. If he comes on on Saturday and scores the winner against Forest in the last 10 minutes, he starts on the bench for the Brentford game. I agree. If he does, Bielsa's lost his head. No, but it, it, out, of, out of all the managers in the world, it's Bielsa who wouldn't do yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Think about it. He's, he, he's not about... If Bielsa fought... Jean Kevin Augustine for his uh, Sunday name was fully up to scratch in the way he wants him. He would start in front of Bamford on Saturday. Yeah, I I, I think, think so. If he no, scores maybe, against I Forest, think, I think maybe you could give Bamford some benefit of the doubt that he could start because Augustine's just come in, maybe not fit enough. But if Augustine comes on and scores and does really well, to then say now nah, you're on bench for the next game. 
I, give, I, I don't think he would. I'll give you exhibit one. Eddie and Ketia came yeah. off the bench how many times? Scored. God. Granted, he was going to no, start until he twisted his neck off. Eddie never came on and made a huge difference to a game like that. All right, he scored a yeah, tap but, in. No, but if we're going by... So, oh, oh, so Kev takes one off his arm. But, but, like but in 30-minute 30, in 30 cameo, you're not going to change the game in that way. You might take a chance, but you're not going to change the game in, For what, Bielsa, in the it's way. all about the, 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 the method and the... What Bamford brings to the team and the chances and da 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 da, and if he bangs a chance, he's brilliant. But but if he comes on and and does everything as how Bielsa wants him to play, like Bamford does, and scores the goals and says, "Yeah, I've proved myself there. Yeah, I deserve to start." That's the point. I think Bielsa is starting. Yeah, but that's the point you're saying. What I'm <laughs> saying to be devil's advocate is, if he's choosing to play him in the last thirty minutes, that's because he doesn't see him fit enough. Yes. Clued up enough to play the full ninety, scoring one goal but, against Forest will not change. It's football mind. about proving yourself and, Mate, and doing that. Listen, thing. you're not saying it to me. I'm not Argentinian and a god. He is. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I, I, I'm quite happy to be Brent, Brent, and Brentford's game on Tuesday as well. He's not Bielsa fit. You'd have to be That's fitter it. than seventeen butchers dogs to be Bielsa fit. And, 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 not and be. all the people on social media well, maybe having that, an absolute that. meltdown, shitting rainbows because Bielsa not fit and blah 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 and. Um, Stephen Burgwing scored for Tottenham and yeah, so and so yeah, played yeah, for yeah. them and so and so played for them. It's, it no, I agree with not playing him straight away man. and bringing him on. But if he does come on and do the job, you have to start him. And if if Bielsa done and that's his own stubbornness, then that's it's not him to hold his hands up. Though, or is, it is, is it his stubbornness though, or is it him acknowledging that okay, it's not working for Bamford sixty minutes? I think Kev's got thirty minutes in tank. I'm going to chuck him on his scores. Then they come back into training and he goes, right, I still don't think Kev's got 90 minutes in tank, so Paddy starts, Kev comes on for 30 minutes again, scores the goals. I don't care who scores. I don't care about stubbornness. I don't care if it's Bamford. I don't care if it's Edmondson. I don't care if it's fucking Maureen, the tea lady. Whatever they want to do, just get us to the bastard Premier League. I don't <laughs> care. I'm fucking beyond this player needs to do that, that player needs to do that. Just get us out of this twatting division by whatever means. If Bielsa chooses to bring him on for 10 minutes and he scores... Fucking over kicks, kills everybody, and then he puts him back up bench week after. And he does the same week after. I don't, don't care. Matter, don't matter. I don't care. He can keep games. his stubbornness. The thing is, like, the point I've tried to make on social media terribly uh, lately, because I'm not eloquent, is we can moan and groan, and we're entitled to that as fans. But ultimately, that Argentinian dude's in charge, and we will live and die by his stubbornness, won't we? So yeah. end of the season, we'll either be in Premier League or he'll leave in Championship, and we are absolutely governed by him. And there's fuck all we can do about it. For all we can kill each other on social media, threaten to murder each other. He's not going to change. He ain't going to change because he believes in his philosophy. And we can turn around and say, that's why he's been a failure. That's why he's never won anything. Yeah, fair dues. We knew yeah. what we were getting. <coughs> Unfortunately. Ang- Angus and what, you know, Victor knew what they were getting, didn't they? So it's not going to change. Should Kev had, or should Pavida have come on on Saturday just for 10 minutes, 15 minutes? I honestly don't know. I've never seen him play. I know, no yeah. one has. And that's yeah. the thing. And I saw so many tweets about that. We haven't seen a pivot. But we, none of us have seen him. We don't know how we can change a game at all. I don't and, think Pavida would have made a difference. I don't because think so either. Harrison just, and Costa were having the run around of the fullbacks they anyway. Well, they? They were, they were, they were, yeah, Costa were getting to the byline. It was just the ball. Would, would just, it have been good psychologically to lift possibly, crowd? Possibly. Crowd, crowd were a bit you know, panicking. Would it, players maybe were starting to doubt whether they were going to score? Would it have psychologically been a good but, thing? But to know. play devil's advocate, the, the, the Elsa fucking, wouldn't go to the crowd no. for the, that. The, I don't think. the pressure cooker environment, you bring a kid on who's been playing for 23s at City and he takes one bad touch. And then yeah, you know, yeah. the, you, yeah. know, yeah. you ruin, can't ruin win, yeah, can yeah, you? Exactly. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I ain't got the answers. I don't I'm know whether. I, I don't like know. Like I say, if he if he if he comes on, but else thinks he's ready. You know what I mean? It, yeah. we, we hear all these stuff. He's doing bits in murder ball, and he's taking to the team, everything like that. That's obviously why he's on the bench. So he's, but he's not put him on. He's not put him on in a game that we were chasing. No, I, I'll trust it. Be else we trust exactly. But I do. The and the thing is, you don't the you performance. Know, is, what, where we are, which is still second, by the way, it's still all in our hands. Three it's points all clear. through his methods. So I'll trust his methods and I'll trust yeah. his decision. Right and, like, and the thing is, I really will. the long and short of it, you can trust him if you want or you don't have to. There's nothing you can <laughs> do about it. He is driving the coach and you're on it. Fucking, that's it. <laughs> yeah. It's like going on holiday. Once you're in sky, pilot's flying it and you're not changing shit unless you want to take over. Unless and you'll you probably crash. <laughs> Let's not go there. But yeah, do you know what I mean? You it's might like, as well I get back and have your chicken or fish. I have, it is. It's, <laughs> took, it's took, literally, it's took me like three days of like sitting and just trying to ponder the meaning of life and thinking, do you know what? 
There's no way we can do about it. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. We can have his opinion. We can, oh. you know, and you know, people's opinions are valid, and people have got good opinions, good valid opinions. This needs to change. Bad opinions. And but yeah, that's the fucking beauty of opinions. But the long and short of it is, do you know what? We cashed in when we got Bielsa. We've all raved about him. We've all said our great is done to turn a team that finished thirteenth to a to a team that just fell away. And the same team might add in Costa, add in Ben White, and then these two new signings. He's got to second. Yeah. Okay, it's faltering. Yeah, we're starting to see little bits of an issue, but unfortunately, we cashed in. We fully cashed in on BLC. Yeah, we've gone, it. we've gone every uh, every earning on red. All in. shit, shit, bad All colour in. on black. You know, <laughs> we've got no choice. Oh, let's not talk about casinos. Red. We're in on it. We're in on it. Anyway, on a high I'm note. On a high note. Let's 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 depart on a high note. How much did you lose? I want my money, so it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, my mate put my uh, put my birthday on, so he did, and they gave me half at winnings, and then I lost it. So let's let's deploy. Let's depart on a high note. Um, Dominated Wigan, couldn't put the ball in the net. Frustrating goal to concede, Kiko's a mistake. Uh, Tyler Roberts looked lively when he came yeah, on, looked, looked like tired, he added yeah. something different. Did. Jamie Shackleton come back onto the bench. Augustine's 45 minutes closer to finding a place on bench. Little Ian, war on bench Literally. for the second time. You know, there's, there's still, I know not everything to be put. I'm not an happy clapper. I'm not one of these that's like, get behind the team no matter what. Uh, fucking stop being, stop having opinions just just support them no as fans you're entitled to your opinion but like i said earlier that's now gone it's fucking long gone there's no we can do about that you can't take it back it's done it's need to go beat forest we just gotta go beat forest, go beat forest. let's get behind um i hate saying that phrase i fucking hate that phrase I can't believe the team. Team. can you edit that out <laughs> i no. fucking hate saying that but i'm gonna put it in and like loop stop it. then stop um get forest. behind the team get whatever's behind gone the before team. forget it forest now forest bielsa go and orchestrate a victory against forest Bamford, go and score. Do what the fuck you want after. Cup your ears, do a backflip, fucking rod someone off. Get your cock out. Grab your balls like uh, <laughs> Juf did. Do whatever. I get don't care. Out. Get For God's out, sake, Bamford. just get us out of this fucking league. It's <laughs> driving me insane. I hate it. Play a concerto in D minor, but just <laughs> put in the bloody net. <laughs> so, are we happy on that high point? Ben, yes. have you got anything else? You slid that over then. What guy said? No. You I'm are just... the most cool man tonight. Just slides it over. Yeah, he, <laughs> I'm just, yeah. I'm he just made my fiddling point. Fiddling and yeah. fidgeting. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just. I'm in. A, I'm in a it's bit. Good of hormones. Zen. I'm at that point. I'm just. I'm at that. I'm. I'm crescendo. I'm there. Mm. It, I'm just. Just fucking get us out of here. I don't care how. Just get us out. Don't go spying on people, though. We'll get points deductions this time. Just get Imagine us out of here. I was thinking that, actually. Maybe we need to start spying on people again. <laughs> Man, <laughs> if we go up this year, it's just typical Leeds United. Just typical ups, downs, tribulations, problems, recall of loans. You know, it won't, we, we don't do up, anything. There'll be, there'll be carnage in Leeds. They'll have to oh. shut the city off for a week to yeah. stop. There'll be a river of... Stella and vomit going down, <laughs> going down Brigitte. It'll be like it'll be like The Walking Dead. There'll just be people everywhere, unconscious, and it'll, yeah. be, it'll be amazing. Anyway, before we move on, uh, I'm just going to calm down a second and read. Before the we move on, I've got a text from my mum, and she's a Hello. Ner- she's a nurse, and she works around the Kirkstall Burley. Oh God, oh, sort of thing. Yeah, she said she likes seeing the boxes. Oh, oh that's nice one. Bless there we go. Ben's mum, cool. I thought um, you were going to say Augustine was in the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the classic leads. Yeah. Um, He's got the coronavirus. He's trying to change his dressing on his leg. <laughs> God, don't, don't even joke. Um, before we move on then, uh, we best hear from one of our sponsors, the guys at The Social Maze. They work in all organisations that advertise with the overall aim of winning new businesses. The Social Maze Limited has helped a number of organisations to generate new business, providing outstanding customer service and increased brand awareness with an effective social media strategy. If your place of work is not active on social media, then you need to ask yourself why. Social media is one of the most powerful marketing tools at your employer's disposal, and many of us spend a significant amount of time browsing content on our mobile devices. The social mares work with all kinds of businesses and would love to help those who may not have the time, resource, knowledge, patience uh, to effectively use social media to its full potential. Uh, To get information from them, guys, and get them to get involved with your social media, take a look at our website at www.thesocialmares.co.uk or email them at info at thesocialmares.co.uk to find out more, and a massive thanks to them for supporting us in the pod. It's almost if you read that out. Say again. It's almost if you read that out. I keep occasionally forget these and leave them at home, and I'm like, I think <laughs> did I we get a message prob- from them the other day that they got someone from Singapore that were via us? Yeah, or no, Joe was stopping. Uh, Joe was stopping off at Singapore on his way Singapore. home from Thailand, but somebody had emailed, got some business out of us. So oh right, okay. Some along them lines. So yeah, um, yeah. So we move on to Forest. We'll get into that in Raggy's predictor a little bit later on. Um, before then. 
Uh, Knott's big Forest because they don't Knott's like Forest that. yeah they, they hate like being that. called Forest Knott's really? Forest yeah they're not a big fan of that at all um, but tomorrow massive game tomorrow. enormous game for some children yes tomorrow alright oh, yeah Leeds United under 18s trip over the Pennines to the scum that we all hate to play uh, Manchester United under 18s so good luck to former guest of the show Mark Jackson I really feel like we need to get Mark Jackson back on because he came on in our infancy and it weren't very well listened and it were a good pod to be fair. So I could go back and listen to it. After getting back on. Oh, you could go back and listen to it, yeah. So <laughs> could do that. Um so yeah, we'll have to we'll get, get Jack on go back on. The scum. There were a thing in Athletic today about that, that FA Youth Cup final. Yeah, there were yeah. I went to Sam and we got to that game. Did you? Thirty odd thousand at Ellen Road for a kids game. So that Jamie like, Forrester scored yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Tink- Tinkler. Yeah, and Noel Wheeler. Wheeling. Yeah, yeah. Wheeling. yeah. I'm yeah, mad. absolutely. Um, so good luck to them at Ellen Road. Uh, uh, scum all over that fucking shit hole. Um, good luck yeah. to them. Um, the Theatre of Dreams. Not, is it that anymore? I we all live in the Theatre of Mediocrity. Yeah. <laughs> theatre of Quick Sign a Striker. They even put a bid in for you, Ben. I got a phone call. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can, we have, busy can we have him on season long loan? I'm like, nah. I can do yeah. a job. I have to go and pay me the money. I'll go. Still do a job. Here's a strange sign in that, I think. That Odin Igloo. Galo. Yeah. Or the, um, I was listening to a podcast today and they were talking about how it came about. And apparently they were, he's got the same agent as Josh King. So when the Josh they King... tried Josh King, didn't they? <laughs> when, the, when the Josh King <laughs> one fell through... Oh, I've got he, him. He it's he hilarious, went, isn't it? It's, honestly, it's, it's come it's to like look, look, look around, around to this agent and went, <laughs> have you got anyone else? I'm going to rear I've got some of these. They're like a normal club now, aren't they? Oh, they do shit stuff that we've had to do for years. Absolutely brilliant. Welcome to our world. It's great, It's fantastic. It's absolutely brilliant, yeah. I love it. It's so good. I mean, even though they went for Josh King and he's like having his leg surgically reattached again because it fell off. Uh, you know, like it just st- it just stinks of like panic, doesn't it? Oh. Shit, panic, get a striker in quick. And let Shit, panic, buy someone that we've sold from Academy and then buy him back yeah, with loads yeah, of more yeah. money. And like, like Paul Pogba. Like, like and Paul Lukaku's Pogba. banging bang him in for fun over in Inter Milan as well. It it looks, I love it. I love he's it. scoring goals now because he's lost all that weight. Yeah, true, yeah. Um, well, well, I'd I'm be banging loads of goals and if I lost weight. I'm glad you... <laughs> really? Truth. So Are I'm, you compared yourself to Lukaku? <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, we're like the you same. Know, when I walk, when I walk, I can see the similarities, to be he, fair. He reminds me. <laughs> <laughs> now I know. <laughs> exactly that. We're going to call you Romelu from now on. Yeah. That's it. Um, Rom. I've totally lost my train of thought entirely now. Yeah, it's right. quite funny what's happening over there, to be, to be really my mate, My best mate is Manu, and it's just, I, I shouldn't laugh at him, but I just get all these messages, and it's it's just beautiful, beautiful to look at his text messages. You know, he's in he's in pain and misery, and, and you're like, oh, welcome to our world. Yeah, exactly. You can't it's, deal with it. It is, uh, it is quite funny. Um, you mentioned Paul Pogba. Did you see him with one of our players in his car over there? Oh, Boy. Austin, Austin Boy. 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 He's getting paid £27,000 a week at Leeds United to play for Leeds United and he's nowhere to be seen. Apart 27 from Alleged lit. That was grand. the tweet I saw. A week? Yeah. That was a tweet I saw. Is he the one who's refused to play or something? Did yeah, you yeah. Mean something about that? I can't figure out how the club can. How's he, how's he done that? I don't know. I cannot f- figure out how the club can. It's got cannot... to be 2,700. Mate, I'm telling you, the tweet I saw, I'm sure it was from our friends at LS11 actually. I'm sure it was from the LS11 fan channel I'm there's sure no it way on 27 grand a week Mate, don't shoot Patrick Bamford's on 35 there's no way was in boy he's on that play for you there once yeah nah, I, can't I can't say it that might be his FIFA way that, there's some money laundering <laughs> yeah. or something like that <laughs> anyway so that was allegedly. quite, it was quite allegedly. topical <laughs> allegedly it was quite topical that you brought that up yeah, to yeah. Be fair. Um, seamless I did it on good that well done mate yeah <laughs> It does kind of uh, come back to the point you were talking about earlier, the athletic. Did we see the article about Leeds United's uh, atmosphere with the flying boy? I think it no, was. No, I was going to read that, but then I was yeah, avoiding football yeah, stuff. I, that's I read it um, when I was on the walk back this morning between I might read it now. Because my legs were. Right. Well, you're kind of doing a podcast now. I'll read it. Right. Um, <laughs> so casual. Fucking turn that. I don't come on, Romelu. Get your yeah. sense together. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, I, re- I read it this morning while I was sat on what bike crying, between crying, because my legs are killing. Um, That's but, like me, but I just do it on toilet. I, why are you crying on toilet? <laughs> what are you trying to part with a fucking head, John? He's trying to lose that weight like Lukaku. <laughs> Wrapped in cling film, I'm in a shit. Trying to get rid of weight. Honestly, when I get rid of this two stone, I'll be like Romelu Lukaku, me. <laughs> Joe, Joe, get me an agent. Get me an agent. I'll be like Romelu film. Lukaku. That's <laughs> not an image I needed. <laughs> like yeah. full monitor. Wrapped in cling film, eating a Mars bar, I'm in a shit. Trying to get weights off. 
<laughs> All right, didn't go that far. Right, if there's anybody out there who can do us a um, some sort of image, that'd be great. That's, we'll have that. That's, uh, my, next oh. <laughs> no. that's my next box. That yeah. 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 <laughs> man, Binky having a shit, eating a Mars bar wrapped in cling film, reading, reading, reading the athletic, reading the athletic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, model for that one. But the uh, the the interesting bit of like, I just wanted to come on across to obviously you've transcended the Ellen Road longer than we have. Uh, atmosphere, Ellen yeah. Road, is it? As unique as we think it is, we're stuck in the Leeds United bubble, aren't we? Really, that it's only a place we really go apart from away games. Yeah, I think it's back the atmosphere. It, we were lost for a long time, wasn't it? Um, it will never get back to that eighties, nineties nastiness. Do you know what I mean? And I, I truly loved that. I mean, it, well, I mean, when Man United turned up, it was just hatred for ninety minutes. It was brilliant, but you'll never get it back to that because of the way football's gone generally. But I think the atmosphere is back. Yeah, it's. it's you know, can you remember when we did? Can you remember when we decided to um, be really hostile towards Norwich uh, last season, and all fans hung around towards the normal entrance, and they accidentally parked in East Stand instead? Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there was a big movement on Twitter to be really hostile and bang the windows and stuff when Norwich coach turned up. So everybody waited where normal coaches turned up, and then the just coach driver accidentally dropped them yeah. off at East Stand, and they just walked in unopposed. <laughs> well, this is nice. This is lovely. Well, it worked. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Isn't it? But yeah, I just uh, reading the article, which brings us on to our next sponsor. <laughs> um, yeah, the flying, the flying boy, which <laughs> fantastic. I've not actually seen that picture before of some child levitating in the cop uh, after Kamaru scored post Sky uh, Spygate against Derby. It's become um, a thing. Is it his dad who does it to him every game or something? His dad chucks him up in air. I'm not sure. I'm I'm sorry, not, I'm not sure. In, yes, There's so. been a few where I've thrown my mates out seats. That's they just kind jump of in front of you like, yeah, go on. For different reasons. <laughs> yeah, fuck <laughs> off. Yeah. Um, You'll never beat the original flying Leeds fan, though. Oxford, Oxford United. The guy away. in the white top. In the white yeah. jumper, yeah. Who was that bloke? That's iconic, that, yeah. Yeah. No idea. We've had a few people, iconic People have tried fans. to track him down, I think, yeah, over yeah. the Proper years. limbs, that one. Yeah. We've had a few iconic fans, haven't we? The kid who cried when we got relegated. Yeah. We've actually found him. him we found him. him. He's a reporter for the whole, <laughs> whole Echo, or whatever it's called. What about the lad who Vinny sides down in the warm up? <laughs> He'll be about 35 now when he has some stupid. That's one of the best moments. Well, ever, that's that a moment. great image. Didn't he have his stag do there or something at some point? Uh, uh, where all his mates and he dressed up in his full kit? Yes, yes. Like that, that kid, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Well, we had Crying Kid. We, we've got Crying Kid on our Twitter. I forget his name. I think he's somewhat <laughs> Kerslake, maybe. Well, I'm fucking out. Um, best atmosphere you've witnessed then? Oh and, uh, God! It out. can be recent times, like if you can't remember. Oh, like some European, some Champions League games were yeah. unbelievable. Um, but I, I think Man United in nineties for me, it was. They used to do what they, when teams came out, they never came out together. So they even they'd come out for warm up on their own, and it was just vitriol while they were warm. <laughs> Who the fucking hell are you? <laughs> the, and then Leeds would come out and warm up, and then Man U would come out. You know, the teams come out together now, don't they? So yeah. they would come out on their own to start a game and it would just, you know, and Leeds would leave it so they could get a lot of abuse for five minutes before they came out. And I, I mean, I'm not even an aggressive bloke, but when you're in <laughs> the <laughs> game, you just... Different. It's different. And, and I, I loved that. It was proper atmosphere. I miss teams used. properly running out. Yeah, I don't like yeah, just walking yeah, out. It kind yeah. of flattens it a little all bit. All them flags it? and stuff. And, and mm. I know it's nice for kids and all that, but it's... But it's, it's, that's funny now. It's not going to go back, is it? No, so it's, it's more of a corporate it, event now. Yeah. It picks the blooming ball up off the pedestal and all yeah. that stuff. Like yeah. that, anyway. <laughs> my mate, my mate's a Premier League referee, and I laugh it? every time. Mossy, every time he does that, oh, I see him, just... and he puts his serious face on as he he looks at the camera, and <laughs> walks off, and I'm just like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's class. Um, ben, best atmosphere. Oh, Your God, time. I don't know. Um, We've had some good ones in recent times. The Millwall playoff game was was good. Yeah, that was good actually. That was just constant noise. The back of your goal. Yeah, Ben Parker's yeah, assist. Yeah. You've got to can't yeah, forget yeah, Ben yeah, of yeah. LS11 <laughs> fame's um, and footballing fame. Um, his assist. And then, I guess Derby playoffs. No, what? it's tainted for me that. No, never well, Dallas that one. scored though. It were proper. Yeah, early yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Because um, we, yeah, West Brom when we scored after 16 seconds. Yeah, that were that were loud. That were loud. Um, Beckford's goal against Bristol. That were fucking loud. Johnny Housen's yeah. goal against Bristol when we were back in it. That were very loud. That game, I want to hear. You know, um, Brighton when uh, Chris Wood scored. Yeah, that were a good one. I can't think of many others really. It's not been uh, that bad. <laughs> um, you um, did a chucking Lee Bowie's in it last minute against AC Milan. Yeah, that yeah, were loud. Yeah, well. that were really loud. Uh, Besiktas when we. 
spunked him at Ellen Road for it's six. What was that game where Artie hit a free kick in and it was I yeah, Petivo. Petivo, like a run yeah. That always sticks yeah. in my mind because I was di- awesome. I, and I, I, I stick by this. He aimed for my head. I was directly <laughs> behind it in the cop. And if there weren't a net there, it would have hit me. And it came at a right twat. It were absolutely flying, don't it? Keeping it. We safe. missed those days of free kicks and mm. going in. We yeah. had, you know, <laughs> when was the last time we scored directly from a you. free kick? Pablo. I can tell you. Pablo, Burton Albion, two boxing days ago. Not yeah. this boxing day gone, the year before. 2018. Yeah, it was that weird day. one when he kind of stepped up, looked like an half run, didn't he? And yeah, just killed that's it. That's the last time. We when that when we had that weirdo set piece coach? Gianni, Gianni Vio. Gianni Vio, yeah, when like. Right, do us a favour, uh, Unan. When he runs up ticket, <laughs> just run around in a circle. <laughs> like, it's some yeah. made-up, invented job. I could have to do that, no. Oh, I'd have done yeah. that, to be fair. Uh, so, yeah, um, that segues us perfectly into our next sponsor. And finally, for this week, the guys at The Athletic. Uh, let's talk about The Athletic, which is a must for all football fans. Have you been reading much on Athletic recently, fellas? I yeah. just keep reading the... Uh, Steve, Steve Guppy's, Guppy's Fish. Yeah, yep. my favourite. <laughs> Steve Guppy's, Steve Guppy's fish. Uh, Rags, red eye? Yeah, I love it. I think it's I great. think it's yeah. good as well, yeah. yeah. Although yeah. I did see a bit today when I were on walk back again crying. Um, moaning about Klitsch supposedly standing on a Millwall player. Oh, well, and, I saw um, that. Yeah, I never saw that. Pereira, Pereira got a, a retrospective ban and Klitsch didn't. I never saw it on day. Oh, they're not talking about that, Brad Sh- that Bradshaw one. They are. Yeah. I were nothing. The West Brom correspondent in the Athletic so you, was talking about that. You can't. Nobody saw it because it's like one of them social media things. Well, that's it been slowed down and exactly. Moved it's, over. Not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a stamp or anything like that. It's hey, he's no, going for ball. Just a, it puts his foot in the wrong. He's place. going for ball and yeah. he yeah. stands on him. It's just one of them things. Yeah. Yeah. Why not fly? You're going to get stood on. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good life tip for you. That it is a good life tip for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, oh, else been reading much else? Do you subscribe, Andy? I Are do. You too busy yeah. painting boxes. I've, I read all lead stuff, obviously, and it is really good, isn't it? And yeah, I it's think he's, Phil's loving it, isn't it? I think it gives him a new release of life, doesn't it, to write stories rather than just. Mm. Well, yeah, and he gets to go to the road and sit with guide dogs, and he does, you know, yeah. I'll give a. <laughs> Give us a wider <laughs> idea. He spent a morning with me, bless him. <laughs> <laughs> Be able to put up with me for a morning, and it gives you a different perspective, I suppose. Yeah, you yeah. Know, before and up on the gantry every game, producing match reports, you know, and it's all player ratings and everything like that. Whereas it's obviously just, now it's more, like, say, story based and, and everything writing, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's good. Uh, so, uh, The Athletic brings you the best coverage of your club. I'd agree with that. A world class team of football writers, including our very own Phil here. I'm going to try and get him via phone on here if he's not just an exclusive podcaster now. I'm sure he'll, he'll have a chat with us on phone at some point. Um, completely ad free. No annoying pop-ups, which is a good thing, to be honest. Um, yes. The Athletic is also the new home of the Philip Hay podcast <laughs> show. <laughs> I can't call it the Phil Hay show because it sounds like Phil Hay show. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to call it the Philip Hay podcast show. I never show. thought of that and now it'll be in my head. <laughs> well, it's last time I'm ever going to read this out again, so you're all right. Um, the, uh, yeah, so the Philip Hay <laughs> podcast <laughs> show, yeah, uh, which is obviously fantastic uh, with the guys from the, um, the Square Ball. Uh, it's a good podcast and they had some good guests on last week uh, talking about Big Kevin, Big Ian, um, as we did with Ronan Murphy, not Ronan Kemp, Ronan yeah. Murphy <laughs> last week. Um, I, I don't think this week's Phil show is out yet. I think it... No, it hasn't. It hasn't. I mean, recorded I yet. I've missed... I've it's not, usually I've missed Tuesday, Tuesday. Yeah, It might be out. Yeah. I might have missed it. Yeah. Possibly. It might, be, it might be in your feed now. If not, keep an eye out, it be in your feed. Uh, I've also noticed, if you Bob, has anybody got Apple Play for the car? No, I'm a Google Play man. No? Just me then? Um... None of that the af- forced rubbish from Apple. The Athletic app now pops up in your Apple Play in your car so you can select the podcast. Right. Well, can you read it while you're driving? It's a bit illegal. Um, <laughs> but is, it, is it on tape cassette? Because I've only got a cassette player in my van. <laughs> have you got one of them with like cassette with wire sticky? Yes, you can I plug into CD, have you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're like old school. Who, who remembers like... They really They've like, gone now, haven't they? Have they, have they gone? Oh, oh yeah, because there's no aux cable anymore, is there? I always remember as a kid when I was joining the... Get an adapter. I remember joining the military and I'd adapted running and keeping one arm perfectly straight so it didn't skip my CD player. <laughs> yeah. I was running along with an arm like that, trying to not make my CD skip as I was running until we got the anti-vibration ones that were rate good. I made I me showing your age. Vinyl player then. We're running, <laughs> running with a vinyl player in the hand. Megaphone. Scratching. Along with a megaphone in your hand. Which <laughs> So yeah, it's the home of Phil here. His show will be up this week with the guys from The Square Ball. Uh, you can get Phil's uh, Legion United coverage as part of your subscription to Athletic, where fans of the podcast can now get 50% off their annual subscription price and a seven-day free trial to get the deal. Head to theathletic.co.uk forward slash talking shut. Uh, and a massive thanks to them. We will put the link in um, the 
description for the podcast and on YouTube. So if you want to follow it through there, you can. And a big thanks to Athletic for their previous five weeks for supporting us in our podcasting endeavours. So tune into that and thanks very much. I've just done a fillet box. Have you? Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. It's in finished. Oh, what? I'm going to finish it tomorrow. Um, <laughs> and we did a fillet mug. Me and Phil got together and said, let's do a Twitter goal tweet. I said, Phil, it'll sell chuffing tons of mugs that will. And he was like, don't be daft. I'll never sell anything. It's sold, <laughs> it's sold about 300 already. Has it? And all the money's going to calm mental health. Oh, that's Terrace. class. Um, with Terrace, yeah. So oh, um, it's sold loads, yeah. Um, I keep meaning to finish that box up. Who do we need to kill to get a talking shop uh, box? I'm not, right, don't, don't, right. answer, don't answer don't answer because there'll be people going fucking berserk about this now them fucking dickheads are not allowed a box they're fucking idiots all of them yeah. you know what I'm not allowed to I think I'm not mm. allowed to advertise out oh yeah yeah because oh, they even they even said, yeah else, and all that kind of oh, stuff yeah, of course, yeah. so even though I'm sort of advertising leads if I put like a I don't, like you said you are a business on it because people have said what are you doing me Business, and I can't, I can't, can't do it. We're not a business, we're just a podcast. So um, I know. We don't you'd, make any you'd, money. you'd have been proud of me over day, Andy, and so would Ben because he gets on at me about my banter on Twitter. Uh, I put on that we were having you on, and I put a picture of the Bielsa box that you did. Yeah. And I put, can anybody guess who we're having on? And a fucking it, yeah, Sheffield yeah. Wednesday fan chirped up and went, somebody who graffitis BT boxes. And I put, <laughs> uh, somebody who does art on BT boxes with BT's permission, you fun sponge. And he just blocked <laughs> us all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bo- blocked us all. All of us, like, on mass blocking. They're like, nice one. Just for that. Mr. Sponge. Thanks for that. I bet he's a rail off at parties. That kid. Gets oh, him out <laughs> mate, honestly, hell. honestly, you just yeah, <laughs> boring bastard. Anyway, um, so yeah, so big thanks to Athletic and uh, check out Phil's box. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> about somewhere, yeah. Where, whereabouts is it? <laughs> check out Phil's box. Um, <laughs> We've never uh, seen it, Phil's box. It's on uh, Geldered Road, on just where it joins with Lowfields Road. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, it's dark, right. it's, I've gone for the nighttime Twitter background, dark blue, because that's what I have on my phone. But most people have it white, don't they? But anyway. Yeah. But yeah, I'll finish it tomorrow. Nice one. Yeah, good one. So we'll move on to this one. I put that up. Shit out of the week. Shit out of the week. We've got one front runner for this, uh, but we'll name the um, name the culprits before we start that. So uh, we've got Young Ben's mum. Yep. Would you like to explain why your mum's up for shit house of the week? Uh, can I just say I'm really sorry if you're listening, to uh, Young Ben's mum. It was his fault. I will just say this now, mum. I, I love you. No, <laughs> it's too late. You can't say all that. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Last week you, you said got she more makes you. than Leeds United here. Last week you said she makes you live under the stairs and she slides food under the door and wants she you does. to leave. Now you're putting up for shit house at week. Explain. She fucked me off, didn't she? <laughs> Properly did the number up. Right. So we went to see Top Flight Time Machine live. Which was night, excellent. Which was brilliant. Way. Brilliant. Yeah. Right. It was great. And I was right excited all day, buzzing. I was literally so excited. And mum went, I'll give you a lift in at Leeds. Good mum. Like, good mum yeah. skills. So it's like, you've gone up, gone up in my estimations. No more half a bit of spaghetti. We're going. <laughs> right. We're going. That says twat in it. Yeah. So she gets, anyway, we're driving into Leeds. And uh, as we're driving to Leeds, I'm thinking, fucking, where are we going here? So anyway, we pulled around and we turned around in t- towards Arena to Marion to Marion Centre. Because, all right, I, le- I left a bit out that my mum will go already going into Leeds, take my sister to some apprenticeship fair, so. Um, so <laughs> Is your sister the one that's allowed a bedroom and gets fed proper food? Yeah, yeah, so. she, yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> so he's just Harry Potter on this. Yeah, essentially, yeah. But the, the, the Harry Potter I am, I am suite. Magician. The Harry Potter suite. <laughs> anyway, so. <laughs> so, so basically, like we get we get to Maria Centre. I was like, "Where are we going?" She's like, "Well, we're off, wizard, to par- we're off to park in here." I went, "Yeah, but I'm off to the fucking bottom end of town." Anyway, I threw toys out of pram, walked out of the car, and then rang rang Raggy. And I, I was pissed off on her. Yeah. Um, sorry, mum, but you just fucked me off. So Is Ben's mum's up. Uh, she's won it. <laughs> she's, yeah, up. she's fucking won. Seems a bit harsh. We've got to have another though. Uh, Kai Cal Naismith for just constantly whinging on Saturday uh, for Wigan. Raggy. Yeah, was, yeah, right. This was my recommendation. And uh, personally, I think anyone who's, <laughs> anyone who's mum drops them off in town, that's fine. Yeah, you've been out. Jesus Christ, man. At least you've got a lift to town. You've got a lift into town. No, you make me feel bad. Yeah, well, you should. Yeah, you, you should, should, to be fair, mate. Should. should. Maybe you should be shit house of the week. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> maybe. Could be <laughs> ungrateful. Could be a first. Um, now, Cal... Can I just fucking leave now, then? <laughs> <laughs> Someone's tired. Come on, we've all had a drink. We haven't really for the uh, for the purpose yeah. of West Yorkshire Police. We've not had a drink. Um, anyway, come on, Cal. Yeah, now Cal Cal Naismith. Just every every single decision, every blocking play, he just seemed to be into uh, Lino, into Ref, whinging on about Bamford off the ball and all this. Um, yeah, just coming across a bit, quite of, a, bit of a snide cunt, really. Quite a Bielsa mood, <laughs> really. To tell we were into talk about like time machine. Sorry about that word. It's horrendous. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, isn't he a left winger converted to a centre half a bit Bielsa style? I, I think know. he is. I think he started out as a know. winger. Are you thinking Cal of like Naismith? Stephen Naismith? No, no, Cal Naismith's nah, as a winger. Google, really it, Google it, Google it, Google it. I'm not Googling wingers. I players. think and if you've there got Stephen Naismith, I was going to say if you've got the last name Naismith, you have to have a widow's peak because he had a, he will definitely go and bald. Mm. <laughs> I, I'm afflicted with is the that same like problem. a life fact. Yeah, yeah. No, well, Stephen Naismith and now Cal Naismith. Oh, really? Didn't Stephen Naismith end up in like go to Russia and then go? He's his uh, playing position on Wikipedia is utility player. <laughs> All right, sound. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Uh, uh, same as uh, Stuart Dallas. Like a utility room yeah. where you live. Isn't it the utility yeah. room yeah. we're <laughs> <laughs> uh, And then the final two, two joint nominations is uh, Kipri and Tom Pierce for feigning in death during Saturday's game <clears throat> on two occasions. Yeah. Yeah. Just when we were getting I a mean, bit of a... I mean, one of them, I mean, that Kipri, that one, it was really late on, but it was embarrassing. And he, they were, I don't know. I think Bamford, Bamford caught him there. I don't. I generally don't. And look, at the end of the day, he's down for absolutely yeah. ages. They're doing all this and that, and then he's up and he's yeah. running. Same I'm with sorry. Tom Pierce. He's killing the game out on just, purpose. Exactly. Some point, just You'd have thought the that Tom Pierce's leg was like hanging and out, and he did the exact same. <laughs> I weren't. I don't like Tom Pierce. This might be being a bit. Shit for this us. might be being a bit precious, but I didn't really like his his Twitter post after. What Who? Did put, what no, did I didn't put? see uh, that. It was along the lines of great effort by the lads, much deserved points, and thanks to the travelling support for your great support or something. It's well, better in it because we sat him off because he's crap. Unfollow. <laughs> ben Can I just they didn't even fucking say oh. all. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot they were there. There, there were well, about 50 of them. Yeah. Did Paul Cook think the fans behind the dugout were actually his fans? Did he turn around and start talking to him towards the end of the game? I have there was no some idea. sort of interaction going off back there. It was backwards. Can I just say shit else? It's just Wigan itself. They just ruined <laughs> yeah. it for yeah. all time. I hate the place. It's near Bolton where I have to go to pick my son up all time. I hate the pies. I hate the stadium. I hate the stupid bloody drummer that they have when you go away. I just hate Wigan. Yeah, yeah, they ruin insane. everything. They just ruin sorry, us. Sorry, Ben. Your mum were close, but... <laughs> shit out of the week. Shit of the week goes to Wigan. <laughs> <laughs> just Wigan. As a place, wow. incorporating Cal Naismith and Kipper in Tom Pace. Now, if we've got any Wigan followers and listeners, we do kind of apologise a bit. Like mm. when Ben made a quip about a certain part of the world and then loads of fans messaged and said, we're not listening anymore because you slagged us off. Meh. Yeah, that sounded like a sheep, but no, is that? <laughs> so, Wigan and, and Cal Naismith and Kipri and Tom Pierce and Ben's mum all win shows of the week. You happy with that, Ben? Yeah. Back in Harry Potter suite tonight, dust and water. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I, I were in Boggs with Neville Longbottom off Harry Potter on Saturday. Oh, yeah. Which is a sentence you don't often say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> How did the conversation go? No, I know Matthew. I used to teach him when he was were, were like eight. Right. They were in my footy team, but then he went off and became Neville Long. Is it Neville Longbottom? Neville Longbottom. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I haven't seen many of the films, so I don't know, but now he's a world famous actor and everything. But it was like one of them moments where you go, Mr. McVeigh, how are you doing? And you're like... You, it zipped you, up on it at this point. Yeah. It's a bit awkward. <laughs> <isn't> it? <laughs> <laughs> we, were no. actually, we both actually both had wet hands. We were going, oh, no! Oh. 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 Like, have you washed? Is that water? Fr- is that front tap? Or what? Anyway, it was nice to see him, but it were all, you know, you used to be that big and now you're that big and all that kind of yeah, stuff yeah. as you do. But, do you know when you're going... Um, and we're sitting, no, not sitting in East End generally, do you? Um, yeah. Half time, worst thing about East End is in bit and out bit of gents' time. Oh, Everybody yeah. goes in in bit, yeah, and yeah. yeah, nobody sticks to it one way thing. It vexes me because I'm Can't a bit OCD it. like that. And I'm pushing my way into shitter one day, and there's a bloke coming out of a way, and he just went, All right, Gary, offered me a hand, shook my hand. I had no idea where we were whatsoever. I walked away and I thought, Shit, my hand's wet. <laughs> <laughs> and I did that thing of like a bit closer to. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> no, it's not it, soap. It's good. It's good. It 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 and then I got a tweet off him after saying, "Oh, nice to meet you today." <laughs> yeah, fucking hell. That could have gone really bad, couldn't it? Oh, I mean, anyway, Matthew, it was nice to see it, and my hands were clean. There you go. Yeah, happy day. So, yeah, we ain't got any more. And if Matthew listens, he can come on the podcast if Absolutely. he wants. Hey, yeah, I think he's. I don't. Know, I think he lives in London, but his mum and dad are still in Oswestry. I think yeah. I talked to many at Oswestry. You're the hours. second person to come on and like clanger a pretty big name out on podcast just casually as well. We had uh, Dean Smith on, who's been on Open All Hours, and he just dropped out. Ed Sheeran, halfway through the podcast. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, ah, yeah. sound. Ed. Ed, Ed, Ed Sheeran. Just his mate Ed, Just his it? mate Ed, yeah. yeah. Well, like I obviously knew no, him after he were a kid, so he became yeah, yeah. Kem famous, didn't he? Of course, yeah. He was a lovely lad, still is. Like right, so we'll move on to this. Raggy's Predictor. Rag's Predictor. Swing that mic under his kite. Don't drop that C word again. I won't. Should we listen to Sam Delaney? Only one. You're only allowed one per <laughs> podcast. Um, yeah, this week as ever, um, Raggy's Predictor brought to you by The Terrace. Terrace provide unique football merchandise that connect the fans to their favourite footballing moments. 
Inspired by retro kit culture and iconic legends, you can get your hands on anything from foam cases and beach towels to their ever-famous kit mugs. And now, <laughs> home to our very own Burley Banksy uh, stuff yes. as well, where you can go on the, uh, on the terrace. Uh, uh, more than just an order number, get yourself on there and get yourself some Burley Banksy stuff. And, and if you buy Gary Speed, 100% of that money goes to Cam. Well, Plus, so that's, that's brilliant. Quite nice, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic stuff. Um, and it's funny you should mention the, uh, the Phil Hay mugs as well, because I think you bought one, didn't Did you, Ben? You got one? Yeah. I have one. Excellent. Do you just get water in it in your hole? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mum! Just, just gruel. Do you rattle it up and down bars? <laughs> Mum! It's like all of it just gets gruel and has to ask for some more. Uh, Please, Mum. It's not Mum, it's Warden. <laughs> it's not Mum, it's Warden. Warden! Can I have some more? <laughs> um... We all did abysmal because no one would have oh, ever God. had the temerity to uh, think we could beat us. So no one gets a point, um, which means I'm happy with that. <laughs> which means I was losing, but young Ben still are losing on 28. Then me on 30. Old Ben 32. Gary 34, and the guys at the terrace on 42. Ooh. It'll be double bubble this week because oh, we're not recording until Wednesday next week. So that'll be after the Brentford game. So we've got two to go. Forest away, Brentford away. We'll start with Forest first. The Terrors have gone 1-1. One, one. I'll just text them. All right, okay. 1-1 one, one in this game. Yeah, I'll text them for Brentford now. Did you not discuss for both at the same time? I forgot we were well, Brentford. Right, yeah. <laughs> he didn't, maybe not know. I forgot it would have been double, double, double. Go on, Gary. You kick us oh, off. For God's sake. 2-1 at Forest. We're just doing Forest right now. Okay, so I'll show you. 2-1 to us. 2-1 to us. Two, one. Uh, Patrick Bamford and one off Kev's ass, and then he's back up next against Bamford. <laughs> Andy, uh, <laughs> you I can't feel, feel anxious. Fit. I feel anxious just <laughs> thinking about it. I'm going to go one-one because I'm perfectly happy if we get a draw. It's a good shout, yeah, yeah. and I'll go for one-one. Anything else for the bonus? Two-one yeah. uh, leads win. Yes, Ben. Ben, two-nil leads. Oh, he's back. And I'm going 2 0 as well. Beautiful. I yeah, think nice. I think we're gonna bounce back. Um against Brentford. Fucking London. Ugh, oh, they're on two fire. nil leads. You're going two nil. <laughs> They've got they can score for fun, them lads. Terrace have gone one one again. One one. Andy. I'm worried about Brentford. I'm worried. I'll just try and be optimistic and say two two. But their strikers are on fire out there. And they finish. One all. <laughs> a little noise then. A little... Mm. <laughs> I went for a Desmond like I'm as well. 2-2. Two, 2-2? Two. Two, two? I got a Desmond. You all disgust me. <laughs> <laughs> Says the man who backed Bolton of the year. You'll never I'm, be... Never be a, I'm know. saying 2-1 lead. I'm yes, saying, right, I'm saying on. six points out the next two. <laughs> I think we're going to do it. I'll tell you something, that'll calm a lot of people down. Do that, then we yeah. only need eight more wins. Yes. Yeah. Is that right? Well, we worked out, me and Ben, on Sunday night. Well, that we worked it out. I just there. Yeah. <laughs> if we get I, I good results match. to these two games, even if they're both draws, I think we'll be all right. Yeah. we just got to stop them gaining, that's all. Yeah. And then, yeah, we, we need <clears throat> 10 wins. If we lose them both, I'm worried. 16 sick. games but, left. Yeah. But if we get a couple of draws, then I think we're all right. The thing is, though, we need 10 wins, but what's been... We're at 10 or at 12? No, 10, you said last it night. 12, it, no, it was 12. With 12. 12 yeah, out of 10, 16 10 wins. 10 wins would take us up to 85. Yeah. And 12 wins would take us to 90. Well, the, the thing is, though, do you not think this season's a bit of a freak? As in, nobody around us can seem to put a run together. West Brom have stuttered. Everybody around us has stuttered. Mm. Well, we're at the That's point now that... Well, look, Forrest lost mm? at the weekend. 2-1. Every game dropped is sort of a game where we need to just go on a big run. That's what drives you mad. We could have been miles clear. No, yeah. Miles clear. Mm. 15 points we could have been Liverpool clear couldn't we almost anyway and it's oh. can't, but you've, can't. you've just got to take the optimism of, of, of the way that we're playing football and and look we pl- we, comes good. I know I know it were 1-1 against Forest but we bloody battered them when we played yeah. them you know what I mean it, from you what, what I've heard about Forest they aren't brilliant but they've just sort of grind it out ground grind it out some results yeah did you see the Millwall fans talking about the 3-2 game on yeah, I can't bring myself to watch it. No, but they were they were decent lads. They were just saying you have to you have to say it. They were filthy leads. They were filthy. 
And like they're gonna go up. It was it was mega, wasn't it, Big Dave? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> "Of course they were called Big yeah, Dave." Yeah. Yeah. But he, he had to admit that we no, were awesome. Yeah, I you know. saw a few well, things. Even Wigan, on, even Wigan on Saturday, I think Paul Cook and his backroom staff did the very Wigan thing of going for a beer after we a load of Leeds fans. Yeah, yeah he, said, I hope he said you're an amazing club. I hope you go up and yeah. even decent. Well, he couldn't have done it with Wigan fans because they didn't bloody bring any. <laughs> How many? I couldn't see him. I, I was sort of above them, so I couldn't see him. Well, obviously, the, bo- the bottom like, section of the away from yeah, that were all Leeds. Yeah. So that, yeah, they yeah. opened up that for Leeds. So they were just that top bit. They're Barely a thousand. Yeah, there wouldn't have been a thousand there, I don't think. Less than that. Are yeah, you know, I don't know. Oh, can't bring a drum, thank God. Yeah. Um, so that kind of nearly brings us to the end of episode ninety. But before we go, a little bit of a shout for uh, our two bends, the the two bends. Um, did a collab with our friends at All Stats, aren't we? Uh, where can they get that from, you two bend people? Podcast places. Sound. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Just fucking listen to it. Sound. Podcast places, just fucking listen to it. Nice one. Yeah, yeah. it's great advertising. <laughs> it's really yeah. good yeah. promotion. <laughs> yeah. We good, talk about good transfers. One. You, know, you, that you boys don't need the it. social maze, do you? It's easy. Exactly. You should work in advertising. To the man, point. With that, with that I, I do. That's that kind of good. <laughs> yeah, he does. That, that's, does yeah, it? that's it. Oh, you buy bingo, dickhead. Yeah. That's how it goes. Did they buy Mercedes, just fucking buy it. There we go. How much is it? Never mind that. Buy it. Sound. So yeah, you can check yeah. that out. Uh, a collab between All Stats, aren't we? And the two Bens, uh, which is available on any podcast player now. Uh, so just get it. Might be not on iTunes yet, but no, because they're, they're it's, on Spo- it's on Spotify and Deezer though. Deezer, it's Deezer, on Deezer, 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 Deezer. 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 Bit of an in joke that Deezer. Right, we went to right. that passive aggressive bloke for a while. Have we saying fucking? Yeah. We're the fucking not fucking Deezer. Well, right. it is now. Don't know why he's a cockney. Anyway, tomorrow night, um, it goes well. if you've not heard enough of me, which I'm sure you have, because, you know, yeah, whatever. Uh, I'm doing BBC Hi Radio off. Leeds tomorrow evening, uh, six till seven, with Johnny Buchan and Popey. Uh, a bit of a transfer window roundup. Um, so that's what our podcast so, is about. So essentially, so listen to our podcast. So then, then well, listen to me. And tell everyone what we say Yeah. on Radio Leeds. Yeah. There you go. Right. I, yeah, I won't be doing any of that. Um, why? It's got loads of stats and stuff. Yeah. Content. <laughs> okay, I put a transfer request in you too. Um, so yeah, six or seven tomorrow. Myself, Johnny Buck, and Adam Pope, and some other people. Not sure who. That I might is. be going to the cinema. Um, yeah, it's fine. Um, <laughs> whatever. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I've totally lost my train of thought. Uh, don't swear. Don't, uh, yeah. So pretty much, it'll be a lot like this, but with less passion and not as much swearing. No some adverts that, yeah. and like a lot better production and stuff. That'll be about it. To be really honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm on about Josh from my, no, for, no, Josh, 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 just to clarify from Kick my end. Out, Josh. Like earlier on, I meant to press Raggy's producer and I pressed shit yeah, So I just yeah, styled yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Oh god, it's all going wrong. Anyway, uh, so that's it for episode, end of episode ninety. A big thanks to our three sponsors, the social. When we finish here, terrorists. Josh is going to have a roll out with you. I'm floor. not rolling with Josh. He's big and long and strong um, and does lots of rolling about. Um, big thanks to the three sponsors: the Terrace, the Social Maze, and the Athletic. Uh, Big thanks to the Athletic, particularly for the last five weeks. Uh, good luck to them. Keep subscribing and all that type of thing. If they want to sponsor us some more, they can. Yeah, let us let us know. Ben, have you got something to say? You're kind of leaning in. I'm listening right. to you. All right, cool. Uh, so that being said, episode 90, and a massive thanks to the most talented man in the room, uh, <laughs> Andy McVeigh, the Burley Banks here. You can find him at Pants Danny. You can. Really, really confusing when I was doing my prep because you've got three names, essentially. Yeah, yeah, my son's called Danny. And when I when I was sort of younger, everyone called me Pants, one of them stupid nicknames you have. When I, I once said... Oh, it all pants instead of all shit. And when I was 17, <laughs> and then for the next 30 years, everyone called me pants. Which is a bit dodgy like for a prime school teacher, because you have yeah. kids go calling you pants. It kind of fits in. pants by <laughs> my friend's kids and stuff. It's Sweet. a bit weird. It kind of fits in with our stream of we had last week a guest who said his mate was called Cockeye. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are we, still, do we know more about Cockeye? Yeah, we've not heard not back from Cameron about Cockeye yet. We are waiting for the Cockeye files, which we will open at a, at a later date. That's that's a awesome, man, awesome awesome good maybe that could be another podcast, like the Cockeye stories. Yeah, maybe, yeah. The story of Cockeye. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so yeah, big thanks to you, mate. No, Thank you for coming down, taking your time. Cheers Check out time. Andy's uh, artwork literally yeah, all over the city. My mind's uh, going over Have a photo with it, tag Andy in it. You know, all good stuff. Check all his stuff out at the Terrace as well, doing good stuff for charity. Um Big thanks to everybody for tuning in again. Hopefully we've injected a small amount of positivity or equally just as much frustration as what was here before. Uh, so next time when we come back, we'll have beat uh, Notting- Nottingham Forest. You said Huddersfield then. Well. Well. No, I don't really know. Not yeah. Forest and Brent. Yeah. Ronan Kemp. <laughs> yeah, Ronan Kemp. I'll say that. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Can't win me, you cunt. Their second chance in the European Cup against Stuttgart.